thank you, Adonai. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Adonai, that you are in control. We thank you, Adonai, that things may seem out of control. But they are not. But they are not. <laughs> out of control. You got the whole world. In his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands. He's got the whole wide world. In his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands. Everything. The whole world. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Father. 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 Even, even though it seems out of control, you were the one, even in the beginning, the whole universe was in chaos. In chaos, but in your time, your spirit, yeah. Ruach Hashem, hovered over chaos, and you said, "Let there be light." Yet he or. So even though the whole everything, whatever the universe was at that time, whatever full existence in eternity was, it was all in chaos. It was nothing for you because you said, with these simple little words, "Let there be light." You turned. Order. You brought order out of chaos. And you have this miraculous divine way of doing that, Adonai, of turning chaos into order. You have a way of taking just molecules that are all over the place and just putting your divine order into it and then they just start doing a waltz or something like that. So, Father, we put our trust in you, the one who can turn chaos into divine order. Yeah. Yeah. Even the world today can seem very out of order. It is. <laughs> and it is. And so it is. But you, Father, are the one that can go right into disorderly things. Yeah. You are not offended by disorder. You go into disorder and you say, let there be light. Yeah, be light. And you are the one who can go in there and cast out anything that's disorderly and turn it into your divine order. The You're the one that can take things and just set the puzzle pieces exactly where you need them to be. And even in a way, it looks in our eyes, in our eyes like things are disorderly, but you're setting up puzzle pieces. You're just setting the stage yeah. for your divine heavenly order to come in and intercept that thing. Yes. So this is why, Adonai, we, we, we are seeking today to lift up our heads and to look to see what you are doing. Because all we see around is disorder. We are in a unique time in the history of the world. God said through his son Yeshua that no one knows the day or the hour. No one knows. But we can see hints and we can see disorder in the world. And we can see good being called bad. We can see bad being called good. We can see marriage getting twisted. We can see the genders getting confused. We can see all of these things that are disorderly. And say, oh, this must be the end. <coughs> and it very well may be. But I believe that every generation has had their, oh, this must be the end moments. Whatever it was, whether it was divorce some years ago or whether it was some other kind of sin or something that the world was going in one way and the people of God, oh, this must be it. The Holocaust. How much it looked like the end was right then when somebody who resembled an antichrist was raised up God's kids were destroyed in a fire. 
Israel is created in a day. The next day, all the nations attack Israel. I mean, prophecy was going boom, 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 boom. And it must have looked like in the end, it was right then and there. But it wasn't yet. But today we are in a unique time where prophecy is being fulfilled. We're in a unique time where prophecy is actually converging and the prophecies that, that use math are coming to this time. It is the first time, I believe, that these prophecies are actually there. They, they line up now. Yep. Yeah. More so, and not, not so much since the first century. People in the first century were reading the New Testament and the Gospels. Everybody's, who can be saved? Who can be saved? Who can be saved? What do I have to do to be saved? What am I going to do to be saved? How are we going to be saved? Where's the Messiah? Where's the Messiah? Who's the Messiah? All this kind of stuff is happening in the Gospels. Interestingly, if you look a few <coughs> generations before, at the end of the Old Testament, the Tanakh, you don't see any of that speak. So why is it in the Tanakh, in the Old Testament, in the books of the prophets, you don't see people walking around going, what must I do to be saved? All of a sudden, there's, it's, it's the New Testament time, it's a few hundred years since the closure of the Tanakh and the writings, or you know, when Yeshua was on the earth, all of a sudden, it's people's, the, the dynamic changed and people's focus are different. What must I do to be saved? Who's the Messiah? Who's the Messiah? He's the Messiah. Who's the Messiah? Somebody's the Messiah. Who told you about the Messiah? Prophets. Prophets. Why did this happen? The reason it happened is because prophecy pointed at that time. We read in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 9. Repeat after me. This is not... No, no. <laughs> Daniel chapter 9 Daniel was in Babylon and he was repenting for the people and the angel Gabriel came to Daniel and he was repenting for himself he was repenting for Israel and then the Lord <coughs> excuse me um, came to him and spoke to him about this prophecy. And he said, Seventy weeks have been decreed for your people in the holy city to finish transgression, make an end to sin, make atonement for iniquity, bring in everlasting righteousness, seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. So you know and discern that from the issuing of the decree to restore and build Jerusalem... Until Messiah the Prince, there will be 70 and 62 weeks. And it will be built with plaza and moat, but even in distress. And then after the 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off and have nothing, and the Prince will come and destroy the city. And its end will come like a flood. Why was the people going, how do we be saved? How can we be saved? How can we be saved? Who's the Messiah? Where's the Messiah? Where's the Messiah? Why's the Messiah? How's the Messiah? Why is this happening now when a few generations later it was not happening? It's because that prophecy inter intersected with that time frame. Because it says in Hebrew, actually the Daniel was written in mostly Aramaic, but it says 70 kind of weeks, but it's not the right Hebrew word for weeks. The Hebrew word for weeks is Shavuot. We should know that. We're going to celebrate the Feast of Weeks. Shavuot. But it's a little bit different. I think it turns kind of masculine. Shavuim. The heck is Shavuim? Because he was talking about something greater than weeks. I mean, 70 weeks is what? It's have 70 weeks is 70 times 490 days, right? 70 weeks. 7 days, 70 weeks would be 490 days. But there was something greater. Something greater than weeks. And many people, you'll see it like weeks of years. Well, so what's, what's a week of a year? It's like seven, 77 year periods. Or this is going to happen. And that's very, very prophetic. And you must understand this, that 490 years were set between Moses and the Babylonian exile. And now we're saying 70, sevens, 77 year periods. 70, seven zero, seven year periods are going to happen when you see all these things happen that I just read. 
That's 70 times 7 years, 49, 490 years. 77 year periods. What is the 7 year period? We read it in this Torah portion. It is the Shemitah cycles. 70 of them. It's greater than a week. It's a week of years. That's what Daniel was talking about. Also when Yeshua said, you must forgive them 70 times 7. He was referring to that. It's a prophecy. At the end times, you must forgive all the way to the end. Uh-huh. 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 So the time intersected. The 490 years, and even in Judaism, you know, because, you know, God is going to be confusing with his scripture, like we read one time recently about when does when the account, the Omer, when the start, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so you, from the time the decree went out. Well, that's confusing. Which decree? Is it King Cyrus in his decree? Is it King Darius in his decree? When do you start the 70 times 7 years, the 490 years? It doesn't explicitly say. But all clocks and all translations were pointing to around this time. So now all of a sudden, the people of Israel, when generations before, when Malachi wrote his prophecies and the book was closed, and they weren't talking about this stuff. Now all of a sudden you're, there, you're, you're in Yeshua's time and Rome is there. And they're like, who can be saved? And where's the Messiah? And when's he going to come and kick out the Romans and all that kind of stuff? It's because prophecy intersected with that time. But this 70 times 7 is a unique thing because it also can mean more than that. Because in this Torah portion we read, like Val said, we read about the Shemitah years, the seven year cycles, and we also read the Jubilee which is seven times seven, 49 years, and then the 50th year is the Jubilee. And we've come to learn how all the holidays, the Moedim, are prophecy. Messianic prophecy. How do we learn that holidays, the Moedim, the appointed times of the Lord, are Messianic prophecies? That is a no duh. Yeshua was killed on Passover. He was resurrected on day of first fruits. The Spirit was poured out on Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks. He made it pretty clear that these are not just holidays that look backwards <coughs> to events that happened back then in the time of Moses. It is prophetic messianic prophecy that looks to Yeshua and what he's going to do. And that's why all the spring festivals have already been fulfilled by him and the autumn festivals are still to come. But we never know when the autumn festivals are going to come. But remember that the Cycles is not just the yearly cycles of the holidays. We have the Shemitah year. Every seven years, there's a Sabbath of the land. That's another cycle. And then you count seven of those. Seven times seven is 49. You do 49 of these things. And then the 50th year, which is the year after the 49, you got the Jubilee, where everybody goes back to the proper owner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and all debts are paid. But here's Daniel saying this crazy word, Shabuim, 70 of them. If you count 70 Schmittas, seven year cycles, it goes to the time of Messiah. If you count 70 Jubilees, it comes to now. How do we know this? We don't. <laughs> but I'll tell you why I think so. <laughs> Alright, so, the children of Israel were taught 